Welcome back to another epic Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time we're gonna do some shader business and what you see on the screen is basically just our pixel shader and he's just well kind of taking the application surface so everything on the screen and distorting it in those nice waves and this is what I'm gonna show you for this basic tutorial on shaders and later on I will just uh, use this kind of stuff to make some more advanced effects because with that this is kind of cool but you can of course advance it in a few directions let's say this is being used a lot of time for water reflections so this is one effect you can use it for or for some heat because you are on a lava level and everything is kind of melting that is what it's good for so or you just want to create a dizzying effect so this is a way how to do that so if you want to know that stay tuned this is one up indie i am the developer of the indie game clunky souls and a programmer slash pixel artist so if you're new here and you want more consider subscribing to my channel because i upload every day a video and ring that bell if you can so let's get right into the meat of it and I'm a, i will be going quite fast through all the stuff because i uh, well this is an epic level tutorial so i um well require that you know a little bit about shaders if not i have a nice introduction video to that link in the description below so basically i just have my room nothing special and then i put in as you can see apply object apply shader i just put it into the room and here it will start the shader and do the magic so the object is not too wide here i just have one variable which i call the time so i say store in my uni time uh, uniform so uniform get because this is how you control your shader inside shader heat because this is how i called it then the variable time because this one will be running down and so what do i do next i just go in my draw gui say hey start the shader reset it and then after well, we apply the shader apply it to the application surface because then it will change the whole screen and this is what we want to have that's why bam easiest way to apply a shader and here of course shader set uniform this is uh, what the path and stuff which we want to sh uh, change inside the shader and here I just use current time and for people who don't know what that is basically this is just a timer which is uh, inbuilt and it's just running down it's like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on it will just run up and therefore it's an easy way to create and um, change stuff so we don't have to actually do a create our own timer so this is finished and let's go right into our let's say in the other for example if you would create a new shader then your pass uh, your fragment or your pixel shader looks like this and here I just take that stuff out so you understand what I changed here bam we don't need that and put it in and here let's make that stuff all disappear we do not a lot so what are we doing as you can see for example that stuff looks awfully like that stuff well because it is so what what are we doing here basically you just have uh, your color then you put it through texture 2d then you take your texture and well your texture coordinates and those guys because this is a vector it has like an x and y position that we're gonna split up in two positions and because we can split it up then we can actually change and distort the pixel which we are getting here in the end and the, uh, these are a lot of pixels so well this is how it works as you can see i just have uh, a vector 4 which i call distort in here i'm gonna store in basically all that stuff so the vv color we won't be changing to the well this well, uh, what is it a script so basically this command or this function we're not going to touch this guy we are not touching but here as you can see I split this thing up in its two parts which is a vv texture x position and vv texture 
Y position and because well, it's a VEC2, that's why you have to declare it as a VEC2. And then you do something like this, you add a value to its X position and this is it. This is the way we change all this stuff and this is how I, I call it then horizontal wave. So this is the principle, let's get rid of this guy here and and as you can see this extra value we have to calculate it and how do we do it well basically with a few things and therefore we need to set up some stuff first of all our uniform float time so this is the time which we set up which is by constantly updating so this is the thing which is passed into the shader and then we want to have some waves and as you can see, there are three uh, constant variables which I'm putting in. So constant, float, and then speed, the frequency, and the size, how big those waves are going through the whole picture. Because in the end, it's just one big picture. So um, if you change those values, you get different results. And here, I store it as a float because this is just, an, well, uh, a number which I add to its well normal position and how do we calculate it well with a few things first of all we put it through a Xenos function and then it returns a value between 1 and minus 1 and therefore um, we need to multiply it with a specific position because we want to uh, be relative so here you multiply it with the size of the waves how big they are and with your x position so this is important for the position for example if you would delete it i can show you what happens and that doesn't look pretty so let's check that out and is yeah this is i guess not what you wanted to have so <laughs> uh, the position is kind of important let's say it like this and here we say all right the time which is all the time updating then the speed times the speed so you can like change that value manually all the time so it will be updated or the the changing the the value which will come out in the end here will be let's say smaller and then the, it will be less significant then we add the y position which is kind of important for example if you would change the x position that it would look kind of different and then we add the frequency because we add we multiply it with the frequency then you will get a wave like this or like this for example here let's say we do, don't do it or we do it on the x position because actually uh, you can do that too if you like then the distortion effect looks like this as you can see it's kind of wobbling now now like, like it's just changing its x position because it is and we don't want that we want to do it with the y and well once we start it again you will see that now it looks cool and looks good and it's like like s shape and this is kind of nice and for example here well, this is it position and the xenos for for creating this uh, well kind of uh, wavy thing here and then we just add it bam we are done and of course you can i don't know change the size of the wave and if you just change it just a little bit and as you can see things getting get quite wild and as you can see the wilder it get the more problems you get as you can see on the right side you get those well pixel distortions which don't look too beautiful because well, it's trying to calculate some stuff and it doesn't look good. So here, just <laughs> use it with caution. So, um, yeah, just be careful here and, and the same with frequency and the same with speed because let's say, let's make some maniac mode here. Come on, come on, come on. And as you can see, this is like, wow. <laughs> Creating actually a double effect. This looks kind of interesting. Uh, okay, so now you know how to do that and for example if you want to change it and this is a little tip from my side For example, if you want to have it 
relative to your x position so for example here everything was well putting through the same wave but for example if you do it like this and multiply it again with its x coordinate then you will see something like this that the distortion is more in the middle and not so much on the outside portions which is kind of interesting so as you can see the left side is not well waving too much but the right side is even more so this is kind of an interesting effect if you want to have it let's say only be more to the one side so this is what you can do uh, let's kill this guy and that was it i will do other shader tutorials but for now we're finished here hopefully that was of interest to you play around with those values because you can do some really cool stuff here so that was it have a good one one up indie